Welcome to the Perception app, an easy way to get comfortable and familiar with the different forms of correlations that are out there. There are several different games that can help you become more familiar with correlations. Those that look at Pearson's R, as well as labels weak, moderate, and strong, looking at SPS output, APA style write-ups, scatter plots, comparing scatter plots with scatter plots, as well as seeing correlations reported in the news. I'll give you a quick walkthrough of these different activities so that you can see how to play the games. So in this case, you have two cards and you're picking whichever one is the weakest correlation. So a, whichever one is closest to zero is the weakest correlation. A correlation of zero means no relationship at all. A strong correlation is any correlation that's 0.7 and above or negative 0.7 and below, both of those being far from zero. A weak correlation would be between uh, 0 and 0.3, as well as between 0 and negative 0.3. So the closest you are to 0, the weaker the correlation, the further you are away from 0, the stronger the correlation. If you wait for a while, then the correct answer will be selected for you. It will be highlighted in green. And if you click an incorrect answer, the correct answer will be selected in green. And the idea is to take a look at the two cards and make a decision as quickly as you can, yet still with accuracy. And it's totally fine uh, to make lots of uh, errors as you're uh, getting better at this, because that's how we learn, is by trying something and, and practicing, and learning is, is messy. After someone's been doing this for a while, well, it looks a lot more effortless uh, because they become familiar with it. When you're done, it'll let you know your percentage correct and your average decision time. You can also get detailed results to see how your performance uh, may have differed across uh, the, uh, the stimuli that were in the game. Okay, so we'll take a look now to see what does the SPSS output look like. So here again is the Pearson's R, and over here on the left is the SPS output. And there's a lot of numbers here, but basically it's this top right number that you're paying attention to so Pearson's R is negative 0.98, that's the correlation. You may also be learning that uh, this below it is the p-value for a two-tailed significance test, and below that uh, is the uh, sample size, 18. And to calculate degrees of freedom, it would be 18 minus 2 or 16. But for this game, we're just paying attention to Pearson's R, and 0.58 is closer to 0. It's the weaker correlation. So by doing this, you get more comfortable at finding where is the Pearson's R reported in the SPS output. And it's one thing for someone to tell it to you, it's another thing to actually be using it in the decision making process. Uh, then it becomes uh, a, a more comfortable task because you gain experience. And one of the benefits of a, a game like this is, you know, normally you don't get to see this many examples of SPS output. Uh, and process it and, and, and think about it. Uh, in this case, by the time we're done, we'll have seen somewhere around 45 examples of SPS output. And that's the main benefit of this application, is just to give you experience with a lot of different ways that correlations are reported. So we'll take a look next at APA style write-ups. And by the way, I'm going through this pretty quickly, but there is a set of directions uh, that are provided. And if you click on hints, It'll walk you through how to interpret each of the different types of stimuli that are available uh, in the, the games that are provided. Okay, so here is our correlation of negative 0.46, and we're comparing it with the correlation reported here on the card uh, on the right. So this is an APA style write up. Uh, we're told the descriptive statistics for the first variable and for the second variable that it was analyzed using a two tailed Pearson's R. Our alpha is 0.05. 25 degrees of freedom. The correlation value is 0.21. That's the relevant piece of information for this game. And that the p-value was greater than or equal to 0.05, so we would retain the null. But importantly, right here is the Pearson's R value of 0.21. And since it's closer to zero than negative 0.46, it is the weaker correlation. Over here, it's 0.80, and negative 0.666 is closer. So just going through it, comparing the 0.12 to 
to the negative 0.37. And it's just helping you become more familiar with, you know, how are the write-ups done? How do you pull out the relevant information that you need when you're looking through the, through the material? So negative 0.88 versus negative 0.82. A 0 0.8, 0 0.55, oops, 0 0.52 is closer. And as you can see, we're ignoring the sign. Uh, it's just whatever one happens to be closest to zero. And of course, a correlation of zero is as close as you could get to zero. So that would be the weakest. So correlations range from negative one to positive one. The further they are from zero, the stronger they are. The closer to zero, uh, the weaker they are. So we also have scatter plots. And for this activity, you just pick whichever scatter plot uh, represents the weaker correlation. The more that the dots look like a cloud, the weaker the correlation that uh, they're showing you. And also, uh, the more they look like a cloud, the harder it would be to use a scatter plot to make predictions. You can see that there are some best fitting lines that are being drawn in some of these uh, scatter plots. And we would use that best fitting line to make uh, our predictions. The closer those dots are to the best fitting line, the more accurate our predictions will be. So we like strong uh, correlations. They allow us to make better uh, predictions. Weak correlations are not as helpful, given that they're scattered all over the place. So over here on the right, it would be a very strong correlation. So just as before, if we wait too long, the correct answer will be selected for us. If we were to click on an incorrect answer, the correct one is then selected. And by doing this and becoming more familiar with it, uh, you get better and better all the time. Okay, so there we're just getting some experience with looking at scatter plots and comparing them to one another. We can also compare scatter plots with Pearson's R just to get an idea of well, how strong is that. So I'm clicking on. Uh, whichever one of these looks the weakest. A 0.94 would be really strong. Oh. 0.26 is really weak, but this looks really weak also. And unlike all the other activities, I think this one is one where you just have to do it a while until you become comfortable with it. There, there isn't necessarily a, a super easy way to explain it. Uh, you just do it, and, and over time, you become more and more comfortable and familiar with making uh, an accurate decision. Oh. Okay, so wrapping up this game here. And then the last activity is where we're looking at correlations as reported in the news. So it says a weak negative relationship versus a correlation of negative 0.56. So remember, a weak correlation is between negative 0.3 and positive 0.3, and that's certainly closer to zero than negative 0.56. So uh, after doing this a while, you get more and more comfortable with uh, quickly grabbing out the relevant information. So I just see strong positive correlation. I'm like, OK, that's not going to be my answer. Anytime I see something that is uh, within 0.3 of, of zero, uh, that is if it's a weak correlation, then I would know to, to click it right away. This is strong negative, so I know that's not the answer because a strong correlation is the furthest from zero. So I know it's not this because that qualifies a strong correlation. This would qualify as a strong correlation. This would qual qualify as a weak correlation. That's as weak as you can get. In terms of being a weak correlation, uh, zero, if we were just looking at the numbers, would be the weakest. So in many of those cases, I wasn't actually reading the other card because once I knew I had a weak correlation, I was like, OK, I don't have to look any further. So this is a strong correlation, so it won't be the answer. This is a strong correlation, so it can't be the answer. And why it can't be the answer is because the other one's either going to be weak, moderate, or strong. 
All right, so those are different activities you might want to walk through. Uh, you can choose either beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Uh, as you move towards advanced, there's more trials because it's thought you're quicker now, and you have less time to make your decision before the correct answer is selected for you. There are also accommodations. You can request unlimited decision time for the text-heavy examples or increase the decision uh, duration all the way up to unlimited. Uh, and you can also, uh, where the stimuli allow for it, increase the distinctness between the two examples to make it easier to distinguish between them. Also, uh, this uh, activity has a uh, text-to-voice. So if you click on the text-to-voice icon uh, or press the tab key, uh, and you're using the uh, Internet Explorer, uh, then it'll go ahead and read it out loud for you. And you can click on the About and Attributions for that information. Take care. Hope you enjoy uh, checking out this activity.